Welcome back, my friends. In the last lecture, we created this empty admin dashboard here. Now let's fill this with some content. That means we will create a database table for the orders of our company. So what the customer's order will be in this database table. And then we create a filament resource and a filament resource means that we will have this table here, but also we can click on edit on each row and then we can edit each order. And then we have some fun stuff like the search up here and a filter and some really cool stuff. You will see. But now let's go back to our program and let's create an order database table. So in the Laravel framework, you create database tables in the command line, but you don't actually create the table itself. You create a model and together with the model, you will create the table. Let me show you. So we say PHP artisan and we say make and we put a colon here and we want Laravel to make a so-called model. All right. But then we have to give the name of the model and it will be a, an order model. Okay. Order is the name of the entity. So you always use a large a uh, letter in the beginning and it has to be singular and English. Then we will add some options and I will use the options minus MFS. Okay. You will see in a second what this is. Let's run this. And as you can see here, the model with the name order was created, but also a factory was created. That is the F. Then a migration was created, which is the M. And also a cedar was created, which is the S. If you do this all together, you can save a lot of work. I always do it like this. So let's go into this order model. So let's go to the editor and close up everything that we had open so far. And then we scroll all the way up. And here you have this app folder, the most important folder probably during development of Laravel. And here you have this models folder. And here you have this order PHP. Let's open that up and here I also opened this up where all the stuff is imported here. Okay. So here we always have to do a few changes and always when I create a new entity or a new database table, I always have a look at the model first. So we will do small changes here, here where it says use has factory. We will add a comma because we also want to use soft deletes. I just type S here and then I have already my soft deletes, which I auto complete with my tab key on the keyboard. Please note that as soon as I hit the tab key, it also imported the soft deletes up here automatically in my PHP storm, right? Okay. That's the first thing. The second thing that you always have to do in a model is to tell the model which files are fillable, like it is proposed here. So that means only this fields in the model or in the database table can be filled and the other fields are protected. That's a safety feature of Laravel. But you can use also protected guarded. So I'm going to write here protected. And then 
dollar g for guarded and then i have guarded here okay and what i need is an array of fields and what i actually want to guard what i want to protect is the id field the id field is always the primary key of your entity and this you should protect so that no request that comes from somewhere from a hacker or something uh, that no one can mess up your ids all right so this is what i always do the soft deletes they make sure that when you delete something that you can restore it later i always do this because why not why not having things restore restorable just for a matter of caution right so we've done this and now let's open up the order migration which also has been uh, automatically created by our command before and it's this migration here create orders table this migration you find in your folder database migrations here and there down there in red we have our create orders table migration so here you already have an id which is the primary key and you have timestamps if you don't know what these timestamps are i will show you in a second it's just two date fields two different date fields but now as we have activated the soft deletes here in the order model we also need another field here for the soft deletes so we're gonna uh, write here table and then we do an error and we say s doesn't work now it works so <laughs> now it shows the soft deletes so this soft deletes it's just another date field in the database and in this date field it is stored when a record was deleted but you will see this later it's just some background information okay so this is what i always do with almost every database table and now as we are creating much more database tables in this project i hope you will stay with me on this course so we want to save some time in the future when we create other other database tables i don't want to do this step and also this step with the soft deletes and also this protected guarded i don't want to do it over and over again for every database table and for this there is a trick and this trick i will show you now let's go to the terminal uh, if you type php artisan and nothing else and you hit enter you find a list of all this laravel artisan commands you see it's quite a lot of different commands that you have here but uh, what i want to show you is a command that is called stop publish it should be down here in with the letter s if we go down here here there is the command stop publish this is what we're going to do all right so we're gonna say php artisan stop colon publish all right they are published and now let's look in the editor we have a new folder stop here now or stops in plural and these are the templates for everything that you create in laravel with the make command remember we use the make command 
to do a new, to create a new model. Okay. And here you have this file model stub. Okay. This is the template for a model. So in here, I will copy this soft delete stuff. So I go to my order model. I copy that line that imports the soft deletes. I'll put it in the model stub. Stub. <laughs> yeah, we, we Germans, we have problems with B and P and all that different fine variations in the English language. My God. Okay. So here, Use has factory soft deletes. I will grab the comma soft deletes. I'll put it here in the use section of my class. And also I will copy this line protected guarded ID. I'll put that in here. All right. So this is finished and I can close the model stub. But then remember, we also had this line here, table soft delete deletes in our migration file. And I also want to automize this. So I copy this line and I open up migration stub. Let's do that. Okay. And here you have this app function. And here where are the, the, the comment signs? I will paste that in table soft deletes. Okay. Let's save this. And then let's close the migration stop. And that's it. <laughs> I will show you in the end of the lectures when we already create the next model that that it works. Okay. But from now on, we have this time saving effect, right? But now let's fill in the create orders table migration. So a, a migration file is the description of your database table. So this is the place where you put all your fields. So, and if I type enter here after ID, I already get a suggestion table string name. And I have to explain you now a little bit about what kind of platform I want to implement in this course. I thought it would be a nice idea as you and I, we are programmers. We create the backend platform for a web design programming company. Okay. So you and I, we are the owners of a web service company that offers programming design and so on. So every project, every order that we do for a customer has normally a name. Okay. The project has a name, for example, new uh, landing page for company XYZ, something like this. So we can use this here. We want to have a string and the strings, the, the fields name is, the fields name is name. Okay. <laughs> but we also want to have a description, which is a text. So I'm going to write table here and we need a text field now. Okay. And it will be our description as it is already proposed here by my GitHub copilot. All right. If you don't have the copilot extension, just write this line into your migration. Fine. Now I want to have one more field and that is the amount of money that we get from the client for this order. So I'm going to say table. And this time I want to have an integer field. And uh, I want to have the name of this field should be amount just like this. Okay. Yes. Okay. 
This will be all for the moment and this will be our orders table for the moment. Now we have two more files to take care of and that is the, the seeder, the order seeder and also the order factory. Let's start with the order factory. The factories you can find in your folder database factories and here we have the order factory. A factory is used to fill your database table with some random values so you have something to work with. You can look if you want to look for a template for this you can, for example, open this user factory, which comes together with a new Laravel installation. And here you can see how to fill out a factory file. Okay. Let's, um, so you, it works like this. You have the name of the field and then you have a fake function or faker function and you can generate a random values. So here there will be random names generated. Okay. Now let's go to our order factory. We also have a name field here, but it's not really a name of a person. It's more a description of our project, okay? So um, I will do it a little bit different here. So I will say uh, fake faker, okay? And I will say not name. I don't know. Actually, I don't know if this fake works like this. Let's try it out. I'm not sure. Usually I do always like this with this faker, but um, yeah, obviously this is a newer syntax. So let's stay with fake here, fake like this. And then we're going to use a sentence. Um, and then with the sentence, you can give the number of words, okay? So I want to use a very short sentence with only, let's say, four words, okay? Good. Then we have a description where we want to put some text. We can leave it like this. And look here, we have a little error down here. Uh, we have to remove this closing bracket here, see? Okay, now, now we have the amount and here uh, GitHub Copilot uh, um, proposed me to say to have a number between one and 100. That's a little low, I think. I think one order should at least have uh, $250 and it can go up to, let's say 20,000 dollars okay so every order will be in between those two values okay now let's go back here um, we have those fields here and we have the soft deletes we don't have to do anything here but we have those timestamps so let me show you quickly what these timestamps are if we look into our database, you can see, for example, here in the users table, you have a created ad field and an updated ad field. Okay. So this is when the row was created and then when it was last updated. So I want to go back with my orders into the past. So I will use a trick in the faker for this, okay? So we go back here to our order factory and we want to say created at, okay? 
And then let's see what he proposes here for me now. Let's try that out. Fake a date time between uh, minus one year and now. Okay, so this would mean it sets a time timestamp or a date between one year ago and now. Okay, but uh, actually I want to have minus two years. I think it's better that way. Minus two years and now. Okay, I can live with that. Fine. So the updated ad, we don't use it here because if we don't use it here, it will be always the current timestamp. So it will be now. I mean, we could, we could do something like this, updated ad, and we could just say uh, now, okay? Please note that the date for the updated ad, it has to be a later date than the created ad. If you, if you mix this up somehow and you do like minus three years here in the updated ad, you will have an error, okay? Because it cannot be that a record was updated before it was created, right? Good. Now we have done our factory. Now we still have the cedar. So we go to our project structure and in the cedars folder we have this order cedar. And what we do in this cedar is just that we call this factory. Okay, that's all. So also um, we can look into our file database cedar, which we had open before. And here you see this line that is commented out. App models user factory create. This one we're gonna copy and we will put it into our order cedar here in the run function. But actually, we don't want to use the user model. We want to use the order model here. So we're going to write order. Okay. If you don't like all this, uh, this path here, okay, we just can, sorry, you just can delete it also. Let's delete it. And when we do this, it's going to turn yellow. But then I go on it with my mouse without clicking and I can say here, import class. Now the order model is imported up here and down here it looks cleaner. I like it more like this. Okay, so now we're gonna call this order factory 10 times, but that's not enough. I imagine we have a big company and in the last two years we have like, or we had like 200 orders, right? Let's be positive. <laughs> Let's be optimistic about our business, right? Okay. Now we call the factory and we will create 200 orders, fake orders. Now there's just one step missing. And the step that is missing is that we will import this order seeder again in our, into our database seeder. Because when we seed later, the database seeder will be called, but then the database seeder calls all the other seeders. So let's go to the database seeder. And here in the run function, um, actually, by the way, <laughs> I just want to show you, you can also call the factories like it proposed here. You can call the factories also directly from the database seeder. You don't need the uh, seeder in between, but it's much better you use the uh, seeder in between because then everything is cleaned up. Okay, you will see this later in the project. It has all a certain uh, method that I'm showing you. Okay, I'm showing you how to work. Um, yeah, I don't want to say professionally, but I want to say like 
in a cleaned up, in a, you know, in a good way, you know. So now what we're going to do is we go in our browser, we go to the documentation page of Laravel. I have it bookmarked here, laravel.com, docs, and then version 9. And here in the search bar, we look for Cedar, okay? Writing Cedars, that's what we need, okay? And if we scroll down here a little bit, then it shows you calling additional Cedars, okay? I will put this link in your PDF, okay, so you don't have to search it. And here you have this, this call. And this is what we need. So we copy this, this block here with this call, okay? Then we go to our database seeder and paste that in. So two of those lines we can delete. And actually, we need only our order seeder. So I put the order seeder here, like this. Order seeder colon colon class. So later, from this central database seeder file, as you could see, you can uh, call a lot of other, other seeders, okay? And then if you do it like this in a centralized way, what you can do later is, if you don't need the order seeder anymore, you just can comment it out like this. It's really good to do it like this. Right. Okay. Now we did everything that we needed to do and we will seed our database and we hope that there will be no error. <laughs> and if there's an error, then we will learn something which is also good. Okay, so we are going to type php artisan migrate colon fresh. Remember, we had that before. And now we say minus minus seed. So we will rewrite the complete database and then we're going to seed the database with random values. And as you can see, everything worked out. And here our order seeder was called and it needed like 166 milliseconds to create 200 fake orders. So let's have a look in our fake orders database table. So I'm going to refresh here. And as you can see, we have the orders table now. All right. And here we have a random name. It, this is Latin. <laughs> and here we have a description, which is also Latin. And here we have a random amount between, I think it was 250 and $20,000 or Euro or whatever currency you want to imagine. Okay. And also look here in the created ad, you can see that we have dates in the past. Okay. So for example, here we have 19th of January, 2021. You have 2nd of August, 21, uh, 31st of August, 22. And also here you have 2020. So this worked also. And here in updated ad, you always have the current date. All right. Now let's finally create a resource in filament so we can see our database table here in our dashboard, in our backend. Uh, actually, I just had an idea to make it more fun for us. Let's go very quickly back to the order factory. And here, <coughs> instead of sentence, we're going to use real text, real text. It's much more fun. Let's use real text here. And let's say it has characters of, pff, yeah, 
let's say 15 maybe and also down here we're gonna use real text it's it's fun i want to have a little bit fun and i think you want to have some fun too so let's use here 250 words uh, characters sorry and in the terminal let's run our migration and our seeding again very quickly and if we look into the database now i'm gonna refresh this table now we have some funny english text here like white rabbit i think that's that's cooler right but now let's do the resource in filament so let's go to the filament page to the documentation page and here on the left you have resources let's go there all right and here you have this link creating a resource okay so here you have the artisan command to create a resource but before we do that we have to install something that's really really important and you can find that down here automatically generating forms and tables please copy this line here doctrine debel debel we need this it's very very important otherwise the generation generating uh, of the the automatic generating will not work so i go into the terminal and i will install doctrine debel debel with composer right it's super important just a second and it's done yes now we can use this command down here uh, with minus minus generate that will save us a lot of time so let's copy this line here with minus minus generate let's go to the terminal and paste it in don't execute it yet because instead of customer here we will give our model name which is order right and one more thing behind this minus minus generate you're gonna write minus minus soft minus deletes deletes i, I hope i spelled that correctly yes soft deletes this we also want let's run this command successfully created order resource and now comes the big moment finally of this lecture uh, we go to our dashboard we're gonna reload it and we have a problem <laughs> okay okay guys what's going on here let's uh, ah see when i uh, uh, reloaded the admin here it uh, went to the login page so this is just because um what happened is that um always when you do migrate fresh of the database you get kicked out of the filament system okay you have to go back to admin and log in again luckily the data is still here so i'm just gonna say sign in and here we have our orders yes and here we have the name the description we have the amount of money that we are going to make or that we made in the past and we have the deleted ad field which is empty created ad which is in the past and updated ad which is now and here down here we down here we can go to the second page third page and so on and up here we have a filter for the deleted records here it says without deleted records you can also choose with deleted records or only deleted records we will see this in a little while but what we can do now is we can click here on just any row and then we come to a screen where we can change this order okay we can write something here aaa we can save 
and AAA costs 999, let's say. Let's save the changes. And if we go, is that saved here? If we go to the orders again, we have AAA, but uh, we cannot find it, right? So uh, let's let's make a search field here so, here so we can find the record with the name AAA, okay? So to do so, let's go to our resource, which we haven't seen yet. So let's close this all up here. And now here in the app folder, we have a new subfolder filament. And here you have resources and you, here you have the order resource, right? And this is what we need, okay. And always in a resource, you have a form function and a table function. And we are going to work on the table function now. Let's close the form function up. It's better, believe me. And here, the name field, the name field, we do that. We set that searchable and also sortable. Please set it to searchable and sortable. Okay. Here, the amount field, or the amount table cell, table column, you, you put only sortable, please. Sortable, okay. Now let's see what we get. Maybe let's, um, uh, no, let's leave it like this. I will show you some stuff with this here in the next lecture, but let's leave it like this. Let's go back to the front end. All right, and now we have this search field here, and now we can look for our record AAA. Let's wait, and here is our record AAA. And if we scroll here to the right, we have our amount of 999, whatever. Okay, let's continue in the next lecture, and then we will do some crazy stuff here. You will see it will be cool. We will clean this up very nicely, very nicely. So see you in the next lecture. Bye-bye.